From an article in Planetaria, a fantastic blog exploring alien worlds and my new go-to source of news. Jupiter's moon Ganymede is found to be producing some exceptionally strong electromagnetic waves. These waves are known as chorus waves as they can be converted into sound which we would hear as to us. Ganymede is the second largest moon in the solar system after Titan and is larger than the planet Mercury at about two-thirds the size of Mars. One of the four Galilean moons, Ganymede's magnetic field is internally produced. Unlike that of a sister moon Europa, whose field is induced by Jupiter's powerful magnetic field. This magnetism is the result of a highly differentiated internal structure. This means that, like Earth, Ganymede has an active molten core, which interacts with upper layers. In Ganymede's case, it also results in the presence of a subsurface ocean. Earth's magnetic field is the result of its molten core and convection of molten iron and rock through the lower and upper mantle. Ganymede has a field like this, but it's actually a million times stronger than our own. This field results in the generation of powerful auroras, which are a familiar phenomenon on Earth. Now, Ganymede's complex structure is thought to be the result of a fairly quick formation period. During the formation of the solar system, Jupiter, the oldest of the planets, was still an accreting cloud of gas and dust mini nebula, much like the solar nebula forming around it. Within this Jovian nebula, dozens or maybe hundreds of smaller worlds were accreting, emerging from the primordial cloud. Proto-Ganymede is thought to have accreted quickly, within about 10,000 years, and so its various layers were unable to disperse and homogenize within the moon's structure. This can be inferred from the structure of other Jovian moons, such as Callisto, which are shown to have an extremely homogeneous internal composition, indicating a more protracted period of accretion and formation, most likely on the order of about 100,000 years. Jupiter displays impressive aurora as well. These are the result of interactions between its magnetic field and charged particles issuing from the volcanically active moon Io, Aurora and magnetic phenomena have been observed on exoplanets. In particular on mysterious objects known as brown dwarfs. These failed stars are quite common in the galaxy and present a magnetic laboratory of sorts for astrobiologists and planet hunters. Methods of detection and analysis of exomagnetic fields such as these in understanding the formation of planets and stars but also in the detection of exoplanets and assessing their habitability. Remember, life on Earth is protected by our magnetic field, so detection of such fields around other planets could be a sign of habitability. Thanks for watching Astrobiological, given you, the universe plain human. I hope you learned something new today. I know I have, and that's what it's all about. See you next time.